Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we'll be starting a new series where we'll be looking at some of the newer features available in Civil 3D. In addition, we'll be exploring several tools in the Civil 3D 2016 productivity packs. In this session, we'll look at how we can leverage some of the more recent AutoCAD functionality. Let me mention that I'm working in Civil 3D 2016. That being said, everything we look at in this session will also work in Civil 3D 2017. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a typical wheel stop detail. Let's pan this over to the left side. Let's assume I'd like to add some dimensions. To do that, I'm going to select the Annotate tab. In 2016, we have a new dimension tool. Using this tool, Civil 3D will anticipate the type of dimension we want to create, and this will eliminate several of the picks and clicks we've had to do in the past. That being said, if you do want to dimension the more classic way, we do have the traditional menu right here. I'd like to dimension using the new tool. Let me select that. And I would like to dimension this line segment. So I'll select from the end point here to the end point here. As I pull this out, you can see I'm getting an aligned dimension. If I pull up or to the left, I will get a linear dimension. If you'd like to force a linear dimension, you can always come down and turn on your ortho because this will restrict your cursor movement to 90 degree increments. Let me pull this out. Now I'm still in the command. Let's say I'd like to dimension this segment as well. I don't have to do it point to point. I can also select objects. I'm going to select this object. Since my ortho is locked, I am getting a linear dimension. Let me pull this out and we'll align it to the previous dimension. Now, still in the command, maybe I'd like to dimension an angle. To do that, I'll select my first object. I'll come over and click my second object. Civil 3D recognizes that I selected two objects. I must want to be dimensioning an angle. I can just pull this out and click. Maybe I'd like to dimension a radius. I'll just come over and click this arc. You can see I'm getting a radial dimension. I don't know if you've noticed, but each time I've selected an object, there are additional options down here at the command line, so I'm not restricted to the defaults in every case. Maybe I'd like this to be a diameter dimension. Let me choose diameter. You can see I'm pulling out a diameter now. I'm going to flip this back to radius. We'll pull that up, and I'll press escape when I'm finished. Let me zoom out. Let's say I'd like to create a continuous string of dimensions along the bottom of this part. I'm going to zoom back in. I'll launch the new dimension tool, and I'll select this line, and I'll pull down. Note some of the options we have here at the command line. I do have continue down here, although I don't even have to use it. Being in the command, all I have to do is select the previous dimension, and Civil 3D will anticipate that I want to create continuous dimensions. So I can pull this out to the end point here, and maybe we'll pull another one out to the end point here. When I'm finished, I'll press escape a couple times to get out of the command. Now, let's say I would like to add a dimension to this line. Once again, I'll launch the command, I'll select the line, and then I'll pull this down and align it to the previous string. If I do that, it will give me another menu with additional options. From here, I could replace this previous dimension, or I could break it up. Let's choose the break up option, and I'll press enter. You can see how it slipped that new dimension in there. There was another option in that menu called Move Away. Let's take a look at that option. I'm going to launch the Dimension tool again. Let's dimension from the end point here to the end point here, and I'll pull this down and we'll align it to the previous string. If I use the Move Away option, Civil 3D says, OK, he must like the location where he's placing that new dimension, therefore we will move away the other dimension string. Now that I'm finished, I'll press Escape to get out of the command. Let's pan this over. In 2016, we now have word wrap available in our dimensions, so if I want to add text to one of these, I can double click, let me press my arrow to put the cursor over here to the right, and then I will type, I can then grab these double arrows and I can control the width of this label. I'll click on screen to finish the command. Let me pan this over. Right here, I've got a small paragraph of multi-line text. Many times in a detail, you may see this text surrounded by a rectangle. In the past, creating that rectangle was usually done using the polyline command. The downside to that was if the text was edited, you know, if we changed the width of this multi-line text or, or added or removed text, that polyline didn't update with the object. In 2016, I can add a dynamic rectangle. I'll do that by selecting the text. I'll come over to the Properties palette, and I'll drag this down. Right here, there is a new text frame setting. I'm going to click Turn This On. I will then press Escape. Once I've turned this on, you can see if the text is edited, 
the rectangle will update as well. Let me press Escape. After seeing this, you may be wondering if it's possible to adjust the offset of that rectangle, and in fact we can. The setting's a little hidden. Let me show you where that's at. I'm going to select the rectangle, and I'll go over to the Properties palette. Let me drag this down. We can adjust this through the Background Mask setting. Just for a second, let me click, and I will turn the background mask on. This exposes the border offset factor. Currently, this is set to one and a half times the text height. I'm going to change that to two, because I'd like the offset to be a little bit larger. And for right now, I'll say I'd like to use the background color for the background mask. Let me click OK. And you can see how that updated the rectangle. Now, it does have a background mask on it. If I want, I can keep that, or I don't have to. If I select the text again and go over to the Properties palette, I can drag this down. We can find the background mask setting, and I can turn that off, and it will still honor the border offset factor. Let me click OK. Let's press Escape. We'll pan this up. Right here, I've got a call out. Maybe I'd like to add a revision cloud to this. In the past, it was very easy to create a revision cloud, although it wasn't very easy to edit them because we had a grip at every endpoint and every arc. Much better now in 2016. Let me open the markup panel and I'll launch the revision cloud tool. Take a look at some of the options we have down here at the command line. I'm going to use the rectangular option. Doing that, I can just pick two points and define a revision cloud, much like I define a polyline rectangle. That being said, if I select this later, you can see the grips are simplified, just like a traditional polyline. That makes it very easy for me to grip edit these and make them whatever size I like. Let me press Escape. Let's say I'd like this revision cloud to encompass the area that it's pointing to. I can modify these clouds. Let's go back to the markup panel. I'll choose Revision Cloud, and then I'll come down and select the Modify option. I'll select the cloud I want to modify, and I'll pull out a new cloud area. I'll come back up and snap to the previous cloud. At this point, I can delete the area between them, or I could delete this cloud to the left. I'm going to delete the area between them just to kind of union those clouds together. I also have the option of reversing the arc direction. I'm not going to do that. After making that change, maybe I'd like to trim off this extra piece. Once again, I'll go back to the markup panel. I'll choose Revision Cloud, Modify. I'm going to select this cloud. We'll bring this back down to here, and this time I'll click to remove this outer shape. As you can see, by leveraging some of the new AutoCAD 2016 functionality, we can increase our Civil 3D productivity when it comes to day-to-day -day drafting workflows. Would you like to explore more Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.